great, great to be here. Ben mentioned that uh, IDE helped 20 million dollar a day people move out of poverty, but uh, compared to the 2.6 billion people who live on less than two dollars a day, that's just a drop in the bucket. Scale is the single biggest challenge facing us today. At a TED talk I gave uh, a couple of years ago, I said I felt like a, an 18-year-old virgin in a 77-year-old body. <laughs> now it's two years later and I've slept around a little bit. <laughs> it's great to hear Majora Carter talking about expanding the exciting work she's done in the Bronx to blighted communities all over the United States. Uh, that again, she's uh, uh, facing or trying to bring her creative work in the Bronx to scale, which is I think the biggest challenge for, for all of us. As I said before, there are 2.6 billion people in the world who live on less than $2 a day. And here is uh, a 79-year-old's uh, uh, development cynic version of the reality of our impact uh, on those 2.6 billion people. In my view, conventional development aid has failed. Corporate social responsibility is cosmetic. Charity doesn't bring people out of poverty. And impact investing confuses social mission and profit. The good news, I think there are vast new markets waiting to be created that are both profitable and scalable, serving 2.6 billion new customers. We can create brave new companies, each of which can reach at least 100 million $2 a day customers generate more than 10 billion in annual sales, and attract major global investors. As I said before, scale is the critical missing link. And you can read these slides for yourselves. Now, why would big business have any interest in uh, reaching into these markets? Uh, 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 traditionally, big business hasn't seen $2 a day customers as a place to make a profit. Well, three years ago, General Motors, the biggest, most powerful corporation in the world, was brought to its knees by competition from uh, Japan and Germany, imported cars that were smaller, cheaper, and more fuel efficient. I have no doubt that the same fate awaits Walmart, Microsoft, Tata, and companies like them if they don't learn quickly and effectively to earn scalable, attractive profits serving $2 a day customers. Little mistake in that slide, it's, it's close to three billion customers are waiting for a, for a revolution. Multinationals today can't hope to do it by making cosmetic changes in their current product line. Nothing, they have to go through nothing less than a revolution in how they design, price, market, and distribute their products and services. I believe the solution is to create Ford motor type transformative businesses serving the, the poor. 
there have been several transformative revolutions in business. Uh, Ford's motor car was one of them. Apple's introduction of the uh, personal computer was another. In all of those instances, as I see it, those depended on a transformative revolution in affordability and a transformative revolution in making things uh, significantly smaller. The personal computer revolution, prior to uh, the Apple, computers filled the whole room in universities, cost several hundred thousand dollars. Apple brought it down to uh, a range of a thousand dollars and the computer that could fit on a student's desk. There are three keys to this revolution. First, radical affordability, I would put that first. And uh, IDE and DREV both uh, have helped foment a design revolution where pretty much any product you can lower the cost and still make it attractive to poor customers uh, by uh, a half within an hour. And uh, in my experience, it takes maybe a few months to bring it down to one-fifth. The second change is low price, high volume, high margin. Notice I say high margin, not low margin. Often people say uh, high volume, high mar uh, low margin. Walmart itself has uh, a, a number of branded in-house products with high margin and high volume. We're finding that in order to make things profitable, we need high margin, high volume, and I'll talk about that when I describe the water company. And finally, a big challenge is profitable last mile supply chains. Again, I'll go into that a little bit more when I talk about the water company. In giving talks at design schools, I've highlighted what I call a don't bother trilogy. If you haven't talked to at least 100 poor customers before you start, if it doesn't pay for itself three times in the first year, and if you can't sell at least 100 million of them, don't bother. Notice that in the past I've said at least a million of them. In the words of Richard Nixon, that phrase has become inoperative. Uh, I'm not now only looking at things, products and services that can sell 100 million. So I've now formed three transformative new companies that have a good chance, they're high risk companies, of meeting these criteria. The first has a mission of creating a sort of a general electric for bottom billion customers. We've taken um, a $1,700 uh, photovoltaic solar pumping system, uh, I'm sorry, a $7,000 uh, $7, photovoltaic pumping system, and we've defined the design parameters to get that price down to $1,500, which would give it a less than 18 month payout. We'll plan to start selling those in direct competition with uh, the 10 million diesel pumps in India alone, and then we'll create village electricity enterprises at a, at a power size of 200 watts to two kilowatts, which I think is a sweet spot in the village market for electricity. Second is replacing coal by biomass roasted in thousands of village kilns. Coal uh, contributes 40% to uh, carbon emissions in, on the planet. Uh, we burn six billion tons of coal. At the same time, the planet produces four billion tons of agricultural waste. About one quarter of those four billion tons can be converted by a roasting process called torrefaction, which is exactly the same as roasting coffee, into black briquettes, which have low carbon emissions on burning. Um, and uh, act as a replacement for coal and charcoal. Uh, current torrefaction plants cost $10 million to $40 million. We've designed a plant for $25,000, which will set up in thousands of rural villages. Each plant will produce six tons a day, 
uh, at a, an approximate value of six to nine hundred dollars a day of uh, uh, replacement briquettes for coal and charcoal. And the third area that I'm going to describe to you uh, right now is Spring Health. That's the Indian company which aims to uh, sell safe drinking water and make attractive profits to 100 million $2 day customers, especially in small villages. So basically what we're doing is creating a replicable scalable model that sells safe drinking water for about a cent a day per person in small villages, which are the main place where the billion or so people in the world who don't have access to safe drinking water are located. Here's a picture of uh, a guy taking a ritual bath in a village's main cooking water supply. Uh, there's, uh, I, as I said before, a billion people drinking water like this on, uh, in the world today. So the first step is radical affordability. Uh, in water kiosks in India, the uh, most popular technology uh, has to do uh, with creating a single purpose water kiosk. Uh, that's too expensive. Uh, a good solution that does work are hand pumps, but uh, the way hand pumps are installed today, they're either given away for free or with a heavy subsidy, nobody owns them. When they break, nobody fixes them, so 75% aren't operating within a couple of years. The radical affordability in the technology. A radically affordable technology is a necessary but not far from sufficient condition for creating one of these large companies. So the prevailing technology is reverse osmosis. The smallest reverse osmosis serving uh, water kiosks in India costs uh, $5,000 and can treat up to 8,000 liters of water a day. Uh, what's, uh, what we're using is a small version of an electrochlorinator. It just takes salt solution, runs electricity through it, and produces chlorine, which is the major thing to purify water. And electro, the electrochlorinator we're using costs $250 compared to $5,000 and purifies 80,000 liters of water a day. Next is the problem of last mile solution. Again, when you're doing a single uh, product kiosk, there's a high capital cost uh, and you have to uh, pay the people to run it. But all over India and all over the world, there are small mom and pop shops. In India, they're called Karana shops and there are uh, some 8 million of them. We simply partner with a Karana shop in each small village. We built a 3,000 liter cement tank using local cement ring artisans, plumbers and electricians, and that tank is built next to the shop. Uh, the, the shopkeeper fills it with water from his or her own contaminated well, and one of our uh, staff members comes around every three days to purify the water carrying a three-quarter liter bottle of our water purifier. You'll see more what that looks like. I'll show you a two-minute video. Aspirational branding is more critical for $2 a day customers than it is for the richest 90%. So we build aspirational branding into everything we do. Uh, the picture on the right is a guy testing some water for E. coli. We've learned that if you hold a celebration, um, people are quite motivated to bring us samples of the water they're actually drinking to test for E. coli. Uh, and when they see 100 white E. coli colonies and sometimes some moving things on the Petri dish, half of them become customers. It's a much higher rate uh, than trying to go uh, uh, hold uh, groups and so on. So scale, coming back to scale, scale dominates everything we do. We're basically using the same assembly line procedures that Henry Ford introduced, but we're applying them in radically decentralized settings. So here's an example. The rollout, we've been in 27 villages for seven months to build the scaling model and to get experience. 
the rollout will be in 50 village blocks, one 50 village block every month. So you have to define all of the uh, simple components of what it takes to roll out a 50 village block. So we've divided our staff into specialized scout teams. They screen villages to see that they're suitable and find the right uh, uh, village partner uh, who owns the Corona shop. There's the build teams. They have to organize the plumbers, the cement workers, and the electricians to build the structure at each kiosk. There's the marketing blitz teams. We found that you have to do three marketing activities in the first week. One is the water uh, fairs, where people test their water. One is door to door. And the other is a variety of theatrical performances and plays. If you do them all together, their impact is exponential. And finally, after the first week when uh, sales go up to 500 to 700 liters now, uh, we hand that over to a long-term operations team consisting of three staff and a half-time supervisor for every block of 50. When you break down the Blitz marketing team further, we have the water fair testing team. For a block of 50 villages, it takes uh, 12 three-member teams to hit all of those villages to spend a week in each one of them bring the sales up. But that uh, block of staff, you have to put a big investment in marketing, then goes on to the next block of 50 villages and hands over to the operating team. There's a specialty door-to-door -door sales team and then there's a specialty village events team using a model uh, developed by some students at Xavier College. The outcomes we expect, 5 million customers in 10,000 villages in three years, and then it goes up exponentially from there. 100 million customers in 10 years. Total capitalization of less than $3 million produces a net cash return after the capitalization is paid off of about two million in the year four and five million in year five, and then it goes up exponentially from there. Here's a video that uh, describes this a little bit more clearly. Can, can we get the sound on the video? Is an important ceremony in the life of the village. This is an opening ceremony for a, for a kiosk. So our hope is that by drinking this water, the <laughs> diarrhea, typhoid, cholera, and similar diseases will disappear uh, from your families. More and more customers in rural Larissa are buying safe water from their local small shop for four cents a day. They're buying it from small village shopkeepers. Windhorse and Spring Health India partner with the shopkeepers and install a 3,000 liter cement tank next to the shop, which the shopkeeper fills with water from his shallow open well, which is usually contaminated with fecal pathogens. A company staff member purifies the water in the tank by adding chlorine and other water purifiers. A central part of the Spring Health rollout strategy is creating a strong, dependable brand identity in small, remote rural villages. A bicycle home delivery service carries jerry cans filled with safe drinking water to customers' homes up to three kilometers from the kiosk at a cost of eight cents for 10 liters compared with four cents at the kiosk. This expanded customer base includes home delivery to customers who are considered to be untouchables. Because of cultural stigma, 
If a member of the untouchable cast touches the water tap of a tank, the shopkeeper would have to empty his 3,000 liter tank and purify it before he could start selling water again. The people in rural villages in Orissa report a rapid drop in diarrhea, and they are very happy with the result. Buying safe water from the village shop costs uh, about four cents a day uh, for 10 liters, which is enough uh, to provide drinking water for the average family. That amounts to about 15 or 16 dollars a year. But the families now pay between $25 and $250 a year to treat the sicknesses they get from drinking bad water. They pay for medicines for diarrhea at the chemist, visits to the doctor, oral rehydration salts, they pay for IVs when they're necessary, and if they get cholera or typhoid, they pay much more uh, for an admission to the hospital for proper treatment. Over the next three years, we will partner with 10,000 village shops and sell safe drinking water to 5 million people. Over 10 years, that number will increase to 400,000 shops in 20 countries. And with new access to safe drinking water, 200 million rural people will lead more prosperous and healthy lives. So in closing, I just want to say that companies like Apple, Walmart, and Tata will be brought to their knees like General Motors if they don't start to invest quickly and effectively in uh, $2 a day markets. All it takes is one person with a dream, and I see many such persons in the audience today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Paul. That's just amazing.